Well, it's quite a pleasure to speak in this forum on the topic of making the poor more resilient to overcome future crises and the role of the World Bank. We know that the mandate of the World Bank is to promote growth, to reduce poverty. And we know that poor people, in general, as a group, most vulnerable to the crisis. And according to our estimation, the food and fuel crisis in 2007 and 8 put about 130 to 150 million people back into poverty. And certainly now the food prices and so on decline, the situation improved a little bit. But as Ross just mentioned, the food and fuel crises were followed by financial crisis, economic crisis. And again, according to our estimation, by the end of next year, about 89 million people will lose the opportunity to get out of poverty. But I have to say, the crisis is not only going to put people into poverty. Its impact is much larger. Because of the crisis, many people do the job, and they will lose ability to afford adequate nutrition. So malnutrition will increase. And also, some young children, because their parents lose the job, they may lose the opportunity of schooling. And those kind of things are going to have a long scar on those people, deprive their ability in the future to participate in a prosperous economic growth and, and opportunities. And we know that the crisis may happen again in the future. And not only food and fuel crisis, financial crisis, we may also have something Russ referred to, the global warming climate change. That can also be a crisis. So under the current situation, to discuss the topic, make the poor more resilient to the crisis. I think it's a very timely topic. But here I discuss two types of crisis. One is food crisis, fuel crisis. The other one is economic crisis. And how to you know, enhance the ability of the poor, increase their resilience, I think it requires government effort, international communities effort, certainly including the World Bank. For the food crisis, I think one reason for crisis we observe in our regionally or in our country or internationally related to a very specific characteristic of food demand. We know it's very inelastic. People need to have food to survive no matter how high the price is, if they can afford to. And we know that if there are some kind of changes in the supply, even a small drop in supply can cause a huge price increases. And the supply changes can come from the production sectors due to the weather, drought, flood, production can decline. But sometimes can also due to the bad trade policies. Your neighbors, for some reason, reduce their export. And it can cause the very thin international market to have a huge increase in the prices. And that will feed back to the domestic you know, food prices and so on. All those kind of things is going to have a big adverse impact on the poor especially for the urban poor. They do not produce grain food for themselves. And under the kind of situation, how to cope with that? Certainly, for the government, can do some policy to reduce the price, uh, the, the production uh, 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 stability, right? By either engage investment in irrigation, so the production can be more resistant to the weather shock, or to improve the technologies 
to make the crop more resilient to adverse weather. And for this, can reduce the production you know, uh, a fluctuation. The government can also increase the reserve and also improve the reserve management. And so if there's some kind of reduction in the current production, you can use the reserve to stabilize the prices. And I think that will help the pool. For this kind of effort, certainly the World Bank can help. The World Bank is a knowledge bank, and the World Bank also has an arm to provide funding. So the World Bank can provide technique assistance or funding to support the developing country make investment in technology, in irrigation, or in the facility for grand reserve and management. That can help. But in addition to this kind of production size shock, as I mentioned, sometimes if your neighbors have some kind of you know, poor trade policies, you can be burned, right? So under that kind of situation, I think the Developing country government can help in a way by using all kind of international forum, including the UN or the G20 to promote free trade, to ask all the government to make a pledge. Never use trade policy as a way to affect international grain market. Although that may not be minding, but a pledge will still be useful in that kind of forum. And if we can have a formal agreement, that would be even better. But even the government can use international forum and reduce the government intervention. We know some kind, sometimes the global grain price can fluctuate a lot because of the speculations. And especially for interest rate, it's extremely low. You have excess liquidity. And under the kind of situation, the speculator may turn grain into some kind of asset class and speculate that. And that's what we observed in the period of 2007-2008. Another kind of situation, how can we cope with that? I think that we can have some kind of international agreement and come up with something you can promote, like global virtual stock or global share stock and uh, to you know, reduce the possibility to gain from this kind of speculation, I think that will help. And so for that, the World Bank, the IPRI and so on can also help. The way that we should be a firm advocate of free trade, we should provide a knowledge basis for the reserve design in the virtual stock and an international share reserve. You can read that, I think we can help the poor to increase their resistance to this kind of possible shock. And as I mentioned, in addition to the food and the fuel crisis, you can also have economic crisis. For the economic crisis, you have two types. One is homegrown crisis. Like in the 1980s, Latin America debt crisis, or in the 1990s, East Asian crisis, that's homegrown. But you can also have a global crisis. You know, it originated in some high-income country, in a make low-income country, developing country, to be affected. And uh, no matter it's a homegrown crisis or global crisis, I'd like to promote an idea. The best way for the developing country to cope with it is to follow a development strategy I often advocate, is to have your economy development rely on your competitive advantage in each stage of your development in your industrial choice, technological choice. Because if you follow your competitive advantage in your development, the economy will be most competitive. And certainly, if you are most competitive in your domestic market and international market, certainly you are going to have a less homegrown crisis. And the poor will have less suffer. 
At the same time, if a developing follow their competitive advantages, in general, they are in more labor abundant sector and so on. They can create a lot of job. So under that kind of situation, it will be inclusive also. And the poor will be able to benefit from the process of development. At the same time, as long as they have the income, they will be able to protect themselves, right? And also, if you follow your competitive advantage, the economy is likely to be have a strong position in external account, so they have handsome reserve. At the same time, their government will have a strong fiscal position. If you have a global crisis, as we observe now, the country will have much more room to engage in counter-cyclical interventions and to maintain the growth, as we observe in the emerging market in China, in India, in Brazil, and so on. So follow the comparative advantage will enhance the growth competitiveness and enhance the ability for the poor to have a less shock from the crisis. But if you do something against it, let's say you want to promote some kind of technology or some kind of industry which are so advanced and go against your competitive advantage, everything will be reversed. Certainly, I only have 10 minutes. I don't have time to elaborate, but I'd like to say I have a book on this. My marshal liked it. <laughs> but anyway, no matter what kind of policy the government follow, you cannot eliminate crisis. So under the kind of situation, poor will be suffering. And what can the government do? Certainly, the government need to improve the social protection system. And uh, to make the social protection system work well, you need to target the poor effectively. And for that, I think the World Bank can help in many ways. The World Bank is a knowledge bank. So we need to promote the development thinking to advise our developing country in the process of their economic development, follow their competitive advantage, create a condition, the institution for the country to follow the competitive advantage. We should also advise the developing country to improve their social protection system and to improve the effectiveness of their social protection system. For example, recently we published a book called Conditional Case Transfer, and that is a book based on the experiences in Mexico and some other Latin American country. And it's very timing. And during the crisis, many countries learned the experience from that, but certainly, not only the World Bank is a knowledge bank, the World Bank is also a bank. So we can provide some funding to support the, you know, <coughs> the, 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 to, to support, to improve the social protection and uh, to facilitate the conditional cash transfer, all those kind of pro program. But uh, to enhance the ability for the World Bank to do that. And especially in anticipation, we may have a quite a number of crises to come, the World Bank also need to increase its capital base, right? So it's very important to give the World Bank more money. <laughs> so thank you very much to have the opportunity to participate in this <laughs> forum. Thank you.